Hi friends, welcome back to the third round of 2019 Animal Artist Collective videos. The aim of these videos and the art created is to provide a platform for emerging artists, to promote positive messages for animal welfare and to connect artists to their communities. Artwork produced is always made available for sale with at least 50% of the proceeds going to a non-profit animal conservation organisation. Unofficial participation is absolutely welcomed, videos and artwork alike, so if you create something based around the theme, make sure you share it with us on social media. All the links can be found in the description below. I'm really looking forward to seeing all of the pieces and videos from all of the members this round as it's such an interesting and different theme and I highly encourage you to check them out too. All of the participating artist links can be found in the description and I would like to say welcome to our guest artist for this round, Sarah from The Art Hive. I hope you enjoyed this theme, Sarah. Speaking of theme, what is it this time? This round was dedicated to extinct animals. Yes, very different, but it also opened up opportunities to be creative and to work on something that perhaps some of us may not have worked on otherwise. There were two which I really wanted to work on, the first being the classic T-Rex, Jurassic Park, hello, and the second being the saber-toothed tiger or cat, I call it tiger and that's what I'm sticking with. I chose the latter of my options as you can probably see through the developing footage and oh yes, I am so glad I did because I had so much fun with this and created something completely different to what I thought I was going to create. Before I get into the creation side of things, let's start with some facts about this creature because this is an interesting one and uh, you don't often hear about these prehistoric animals. Its common name is the saber-toothed cat or tiger and the best known genera is the Smilodon which is the one that I've based my art around for this. Although referred to as a cat or a tiger it's actually not that closely related to modern day big cats like the tiger or the lions that we all know and love. Smilodon lived in the Americas during the Pleistocene era, not to be confused with Plasticine, I really hope that I'm saying that right. Or it can also be known as the Ice Age, which is much easier to say in my opinion, which was about two and a half million to 11,000 years ago. So it's banned for quite a while there. Other genus of the saber also lived up to 56 million years ago, so the genome was around for a really, really long time. The most defining feature of the Smilodon was, of course, the teeth, and the term saber tooth was given based on the shape of the upper canines, as they resembled the kind of curved blade of a back sword. The canines were almost a foot long, roughly 11 inches, and were actually fairly brittle, and they would often break off in close combat, and they didn't regrow, so once that tooth was gone, it was gone. In addition to that, they could open up their mouths much like a snake can, you know how they kind of dislocate their jaw, they couldn't quite do that, but they opened them up pretty wide, and that's so that they could get around their prey, but they couldn't bite with much force actually as they needed to protect those massive canines. So their jaw wasn't as strong as a big cats or other animals that we find today. It's also believed that the Smilodon hunted large mammals like bison and camels and often competed for prey with the likes of, get this, dire wolves and American lions. Yes, dire wolves existed too, I wasn't aware until I did some research, but they are actual things. It's also believed that they were pack animals, much like modern day lions, and hunted to protect one another. But that is still open for debate, obviously there's a lot that is unknown about these creatures, but based on research and things, that is what they have come up with. Also, the large mammals were a lot larger than the bison and other things that we have to date. They were like on a whole different scale, they were huge. Why did the saber become extinct? 
Early humans didn't really have the ability to hunt these beasts to extinction like we do nowadays or not to the extent that we do nowadays. So instead it's thought that the extinction of the Smilodon is linked to climate change, obviously the evaporation of the Ice Age, and the extinction of larger herbivores, which made a majority of the Smilodon's diet. Larger herbivores were replaced by smaller, agile creatures like the modern day deer, and the Smilodon being a lot more of a stocky creature, it was used to hunting the slower moving bison like creatures, so it was unable to adapt to hunting these smaller herbivores, and it may also have become extinct due to other faster feline like creatures or canine like creatures which eventually evolved to replace the Smilodon. The more popular reason is of course the end of the Ice Age. As the Ice Age ended, it left a lot of creatures unable to adapt and thrive, linking this to the extinction of the larger herbivores as I mentioned, and that eventually to the Smilodon because the Smilodon hunted those larger herbivores. So climate change and the extinction of those larger herbivores are really closely linked. Now that we have a few facts under our belt, let's talk about the creation of this piece because I'm really excited about this. As you're seeing, I've gone completely wild on this one. It's not my usual natural neutral tones, but I'll talk about more about the reason for this in a little bit. But I want to start with the actual creation of the sketch. I started this process trying to decide what to do for a reference photo. It's not often you come across a saber toothed tiger in the wild nowadays, so getting my own photo was obviously out the window. Pixabay searches threw up some computer generated images, you know, like uh, the film, the Ice Age, that kind of thing. And a Google search found stills from the TV show Walking with Beasts, which didn't really depict the cat as I wanted to portray him. Instead, I decided to combine several different big cats and references, as well as a little bit of imagination. The base of the saber is a lion, the nose, eye and jaw structure there. The neck and the body is taken from the tiger as they're often a bit more stocky which kind of suits the saber a bit more perfectly. The ears are a mixture of tiger and lion, I kind of just adapted them, just kind of used my own imagination for those. And for the teeth I looked up some images of saber skulls to determine the kind of shape and length. So combining lots of different reference material to devise my own image of the saber, it was something that I really enjoyed and the outcome is completely unique to me and also unique to other depictions of the saber. I wanted mine to look a little more like the modern day big cats even though they aren't really closely related and I wanted less sort of a bulldog like image that I came across in my search so even though they weren't closely related to big cats I kind of wanted mine to look like that because that was my sort of Im Im image in my head of what one would look like. I still wanted to keep that kind of long nose, low brow kind of thing kind of look and I was pretty happy with how my sketch turned out. Initially I was going to colour this using natural tones, creating a sort of mix of all the big cats including spots, stripes and also the plain kind of wheaty fur of a lion. So I was going to combine like a snow leopard, a tiger, that kind of thing. But then I remembered that this was my own depiction and creation of a saber toothed tiger and I wanted to go a little bit wild. I've also been recently gifted a set of Albert Durer watercolour pencils and I really wanted to have a go with all the bright colours I often don't get to use in all of my other pieces so that's when I thought about the crudes. Anybody seen that? If you have, you probably know what I'm going to mention and you probably would have guessed that that's where a lot of my inspiration has come from for the colouring of this. But in the crudes, there's this big saber-like cat portrayed in the film. I'll pop a picture up for you for those that haven't seen. And he's the most wildly coloured thing and absolutely friggin' adorable. So his name is Chunky, so with Chunky the cat as inspiration, I decided on a rainbow saber. That's obviously the most natural conclusion and depiction of a saber toothed tiger ever. So out came the watercolour pencils. I wanted that greeny yellow kind of colour on the nose and I wanted it to fade out into blue purples and almost like turquoisey colours. 
I wanted a really vibrant finish as well, so I used fairly light colours for the watercolour base. This also meant that I could go in darker with my polychromos, so add some darker colours over the top, um, so I can add in all of those fur details that I love to do. The ears were just all out rainbow goodness. I could have coloured them with dark purples and blues to kind of match the greeny blue tone of the nose, but I just wanted to have a full on rainbow explosion. While using these unnatural wild colours, I also wanted to keep that element of realism. So I kept this side of the face white or grey in this case and the mouth as natural as possible. And I think the stark contrasts in the wild vibrant areas and the more natural areas works really, really well. It's also at this point that I decided not to add any stripes or spots in the cat. I think this would have made the piece look too busy and a little bit messy, so I decided to keep the fur patterning clean. There's a few little stripes around the eye as I wanted there to be like a small tie to the modern day tiger, just a little nod to its ancestor. But that's all that there is really. His crazy fur colour is enough for me. He'd probably already have a hard time in the Ice Age blending in with funky fur without me adding patterns as well to him. The part I loved most on this was actually the teeth. I just made up the colouring and shading on this and went in with kind of what felt right. I thought about the light direction on the lion reference that I was using for the fur and applied that to how I shaded the teeth. I also tried to make them look a little bit more textured and almost ridged rather than the smooth canines that cats have nowadays. Through doing a little bit more research I did come across the fact that their teeth were a little bit more like serrated so that they could rip into their prey a lot easier. So that kind of made sense for me to do that. For shading the fur I just used a regular old lion reference and I turned the image grayscale so I could grasp where the shadows were and then applied that to my wild colours. The green shadows were made by just using darker greens and a little bit of red and the blue shadows were made by mixing a little bit of purple in there. I must admit, shading in these tones was a little bit tricky at first and I kind of regretted doing something rainbowlicious. But as I worked on it more, it soon became like a second nature and it was as if I was shading regular coloured fur eventually. All in all, I am really proud of the outcome of this piece. It's not often that I use my imagination and break outside of a reference and this might not be to everyone's tastes but this is my interpretation of one of my favourite prehistoric creatures and I love it. And it's also not often that I actually say that I love a piece so yay. The charity I'm donating to for this piece is the Big Cat Sanctuary. I must admit I did find it difficult to choose an appropriate conservation charity but I wanted one that was cat based. As I base this piece around a lion slash tiger, wait a minute, a liger is a thing isn't it, I could have, could have used that. <laughs> anyway, this charity seemed like the obvious choice. It's also local to me and I've visited a few times on their open days and they do amazing work for all the big cats they house as well as their conservation and education efforts. They often hold uh, workshop days and things like that. So I really think that this was a good choice for this. And also please do go and check them out. I've left the link in the description for you. There's info about each of the cats they house. They each have their own like little profiles as well as info on their rare open days. You can go and visit and see all of the cats. Also, the snow leopard I drew last month, if you watched the how to draw spots fur tutorial, that snow leopard is based on their snow leopard called Layla. So go and check her out too, because she is my favorite cat of theirs. Make sure you give this video a big like to show your support for the AAC. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button to receive weekly arty content like this straight to your sub feed. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.